in the fourth video in this series, we're really going to focus on SharePoint. We've talked about Teams, we've talked about groups in Outlook, and we'll talk about Yammer as well, and then we'll summarize in the final part of this series. But I really want to deep dive into the pros of using SharePoint as your team collaboration area. Now, a lot of people are asking, like, why did you include SharePoint in your verses? Well, I guess for me, it's that pivot. You've got your groups in Outlook, which is pivot is email first, other things kind of wrap around it. You've got Microsoft Teams, where it's more like, for lack of a better corny phrase, high velocity, real-time communication that is the pivot. With SharePoint, it's very much more the document-centric approach to that pivot. Now, SharePoint gives a lot of other benefits as well. It's not just about that document pivot where you do have the ability to kind of have versioning, content types. You've got SharePoint list views and document views that allow you to kind of, based on metadata on documents, show maybe published documents or maybe just show documents where the owner is this particular person or where the metadata taxonomy is these particular tags. You get that complexity of document libraries that you don't get with a simple files view that you have in groups in Outlook and in Teams. And you know, it's, it's more individual documents in Yammer, you don't even have a library. Now the other benefit of it is, is as well as the document libraries, is SharePoint Pages. Now SharePoint Pages has had, been around for a long time, like it's been in there since the kind of 2007 Toshin, where they kind of blended in this notion of uh, web content management coming from Microsoft Content Management Server into the product. Now what's interesting with it is, is it, that was really where it came into this fray of being the home page or the portal for either a department or a division or even the entire company if you're doing it for an intranet level. But I think if you think about it from a team's perspective, I could be spinning up a project where I'm you know, typically working on something that's three to six months or even further out with a smaller subset of members. I might need a landing page where I have a dashboard which is surfacing things like Power BI on it or it's surfacing task lists and it's surfacing documents based on a particular saved view that's important to me at that point in time. Or maybe I'm surfacing tasks that come from SharePoint. Again, I didn't say plans there. In Planner, I said tasks in SharePoint. And so there's a lot of kind of, I wouldn't say legacy, but there's a lot of history in SharePoint where there's been a bunch of things that are being pulled out of SharePoint and moving off to other worlds, which I'll cover in another series of YouTube videos. But I think that SharePoint is still viable if you're doing things around a document-centric approach to working in a team where you want that view as a primary. Now, in most cases, um, you will have to then snap in either traditional email communication for that team or groups in Outlook communications via email on that team or Teams or Yammer. But I think the benefit of SharePoint centric would be of being that landing page is that you've got that ability to kind of have complex document management going on, but then also have this ability to have different pages that maybe wikis or maybe just content dashboards that you're putting together that are relevant to your team that you can't really do well in those other mediums. So although SharePoint doesn't lead with its own communication style that's more obviously email or IM or um, in Yammer's case posts, it really does have the ability to do team collaboration well. Now SharePoint also, on top of that, allows this notion of custom lists. Now a lot of teams have projects where they don't want to use Excel spreadsheets because the kind of level of verbosity of the level of kind of history of what's been going on in that spreadsheet is hard. Whereas in a custom list in SharePoint, I could have line items which are list items in a list and see the individual versioning on each one of those list items. Who deleted it, who modified it, when was it created. Uh, and you can add columns into those list items and then have list views that allow you to kind of produce these really nice reports. And so I think that's another powerful thing you get from team collaboration in SharePoint. Now the big kicker, and this is the main reason that I left this in as a compelling reason of why using SharePoint, is that it works on premises. If you're in groups, eh, you need Office 365. Microsoft Teams, eh, you need Office 365. Yammer, eh, it's only in the cloud. So SharePoint Server is the only way to really do team collaboration right now if you're purely on premises and don't have anything connected, hybrid connection, or if you're cloud, cloud only where everything's in Office 365. So SharePoint is that compelling way, and that's often something that people will kind of forget about. And um, you know, we're reminded that every day here at Hyperfish when we're talking to customers about our product, we lead with Office 365 because we want to continue that message of where things are going in the future. But the reality is a lot of customers are still on-premises. And so that's really where team collaboration will be for now if you're in that on-premises world. There's no indication of Yammer moving down to on-premises or with groups and 
uh, teams in a purely uh, on-premises scenario. In hybrid, yes, sure, you can do it, but not in on-premises. And then I guess the negatives or the cons of using SharePoint from this team collaboration is that you know, SharePoint's been around for a long, long time. Um, and you could even say the same thing about some of the other products with introduction of like Teams very quickly being up to the same level of standard as these other four. But I feel that SharePoint had this lull where it was trying to work out what it wanted to be when it grew up. Um, and, and so it struggled to find its legs in the team collaboration space. And things like Slack threatened its use. Um, externally, but I feel like Microsoft Teams and so forth also threaten where SharePoint is relevant anymore. And I feel like SharePoint's still going through that journey of like, is it just going to be for portals, uh, like intranets, and is it only going to be for um, this notion of advanced document management? And then simple document management will push them to teams and push them to groups. So I think SharePoint still has a way to go in terms of understanding that. And I'll be doing, as I say, a, a deeper series on you know, what SharePoint going to be when it grows up um, based on where I think things will go in the future. Now the other thing that I've noticed that's kind of good and bad is that SharePoint is trying to grow itself up and improve the user, user experience via a SharePoint mobile app, but also improving the web pages as you're accessing it via a browser. Now the big issue we have with that is they've really had to push the reset button pretty hard. And what that's mean is rather than kind of improving the experience for people inside SharePoint, they're having to rebuild from scratch a lot of the user interfaces. You know, they started with document libraries inside of SharePoint and OneDrive for Business. And then they've moved on now to basically pages with these modern page experiences. And there's a lot of features that are missing in modern pages that existed in what we call classic pages now. And so I think the innovation is starting to show with this notion of the SharePoint framework, which is basically the development building blocks that allows you to build in this new modern page experience. But it's still not got all the features of the classic ways of doing SharePoint development. So a lot of the things that you might take for granted in the classic pages aren't there yet in the modern pages. And I feel like that will hurt some organizations that want to flip to the shiny new stuff, but don't realize that these, the older features aren't in there, which is a shame. Now, the lastly, I think, as I mentioned at the beginning of this thing, this is the, the most ugly part about this. If you, if you want to use SharePoint in isolation, is it really doesn't have that communication channel. You do have to either embed the Yammer web part into a SharePoint page, or flip everything on its head uh, and use kind of groups in Outlook, which will create a SharePoint site, but there's not really that much of a connection in the UI between the two. So you kind of have to work out how you want to communicate you know, do they start in groups in Outlook or they start in SharePoint? In Teams, right now, you can embed the SharePoint document library as a tab in Teams, but there's not really a rich integration into SharePoint pages. And again, I'm sure that's coming because Teams is early and they probably didn't want to pull in every single team into the wheelhouse when they ship the preview, but it is just something as a gotcha you need to work out for. So please keep watching this series. There's a bunch of videos either side of this one, as in kind of talking about groups in Outlook and also Microsoft Teams and introducing this concept. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about Yammer, and then I'm going to wrap it up in a sec uh, video after that. Please follow us on YouTube, subscribe to this channel, and follow us on Twitter at Hyperfish.